Welcome traders. In this video we're going to go over a few trades from yesterday September 4th and what I want to do is I want to focus on the classification system and looking at these trades. So in order to set up these charts once again we're going to go and we're going to put our zigzag ZTP on here and we're going to set that to a deviation of two. Now on this chart I don't have the Zone Trader Pro patterns classification system uh, because I really don't need it. But if I was going to put it on, I would change the zigzag ticks to an eight and go from there. Part of the reasons I'm not putting it on is that it really isn't necessary for me, and especially with Bloodhound looking for the patterns it's again just not necessary and using up more of the processor. The delta divergence is set to reconstruct tape with a minimum filter of 25 looking for a deviation value of 2 to match the zigzag deviation and I want a delta deviation contracts of 150 and looking for three key points. I want to show the key points delta and I want to keep the non-divergence. So to begin the day we saw some heavy selling and we saw heavy selling at the open. So we had two trading signals the first being a short trend trade and then into a long exhaustion trade. Now I look at both of these and we see that we have to color the two on the bottom here as black meaning that there's a significant accumulation of contracts on limit orders on these moves down. So whether or not you're going to take this first trend trade right on the open that would be an open question. But then when we come up to this trend trade here, we, when we look at the KP3 values for all four of these, we see that we're probably about 4,500 contracts short at this point and leading us into a trend trade. That would definitely be something that I would consider. Either way, none of these three trades hurt us and we would have succeeded with the third trend trade. That then trades into a very marginal negative 183. So I've gone and colored that yellow. We saw a good rebound here and I colored that green. And then again, as we traded down here, we saw another ratio, this time of a negative 148. And I noticed that each time we come down, we are seeing some significant accumulation down here at a price of about 29.27. As we trade into this uh, bearish divergence, we again have a very significant KP3 number of a negative 21.25. Because it's divergence, I'm still going to call it yellow and wait to see what is going to develop. If you were going to take that trade, we did have a POC absorption order flow along with trap buyers at that. And we were also given a divergence signal on the order flow itself. So if you were going to take that trade, that was going to end up working out for you real well. After the divergence trade, again, we see that we have to color another down leg a black color when we have a ratio of 129 here. We trade up into this resistance zone here. Unfortunately, we don't have any pattern, but we did have order flow and we had a significant negative number, but that would generally not be a standard trade. We then trade down here into a weak KP3 number. And again, we trade up into another weak KP3 number. And then we basically see a, a sell-off which wipes out all the longs from here. And on that sell-off we again color 
the ratio black. Now, this is a very important point to make here. We have a strong trend trade here and we had order flow. After coloring this ratio here black, that's generally not going to be a good idea to take because we are saying that the market here was under accumulation. Now, we have then a trend trade here and when we look at the cumulative delta, we see that back here we had a negative 3,080 and up here we had a negative 1,792. But the problem with taking this trade here is that what we're going to be doing is we're going to be trading in to a broken reversal right here. So if you did take that trade, you would have to be aware that if we did get a buy signal here, what you really needed to be is to be long. So that's the danger of taking a trend trade after a strong trend and it's illustrated perfectly here with just a very marginal trend trade into a perfect broken reversal trade that then is followed up by a good kp3 number up here but we're going to color it black because of the ratio at 114 down here where we have the trend trade we again have a very good number and what we're looking at then is we're looking at three good KP3 numbers in a row, which are which is giving us uh, approximately 3,300 contracts on the cumulative delta to be going long. And we can see that we again trade into a successful pattern. We then have another trend trade here, which again follows the same pattern of an increasing cumulative delta on each trade. So we would again go ahead and take in that. Here's an instance where we have an, a strong trend that we would want to consider and that's because of our cumulative delta here. The one caution though would be that there was over 3100 contracts sold to get to this point right here. So we've gone ahead and colored it yellow, which is the Joker color, because we're just not sure if this is going to continue north as a strong trend, or we're gonna be trading into an exhaustion short trade pattern as we did up here. So if again, if you did take it, it was successful, it didn't hurt us but you have to be real aware of what happens once we get up here into the exhaustion short trade. So at the exhaustion short trade, this is probably the easiest trade of the day because we saw all the selling that we had here that gave us a negative uh, KP3 number and that negative KP3 number carried over to this trade here where we had selling on the way up which is this special divergence here. We then next traded into an accumulation trade here, but we see that we had a very strong negative KP3 number here, and that was followed by a distribution ratio up here of 136. I colored this ratio here a yellow because the cumulative delta KP3 number had barely moved although we here we had in the move down we had a negative 1535 contracts sold here uh, i've gone ahead and colored it black because of the kp2 ratio and this would have been something that i don't see any reason not to take because this is weak here and this is be showing us that we had a distribution and the shorts accumulating contracts here. This traded down and immediately there was very heavy selling to get us here, but it was only a three point move down. And as we got down here, we see that our KP2 ratio was a negative 136, meaning that we had a 
accumulation. If you were aware of the accumulation, it would have been a good time to get out of that trade and then re-enter long as the exhaustion trade. And we can see how good that exhaustion trade worked out. The other thing that I wanted to note here is the price of 29.29. If we remember back to the morning session, that is where a majority of the contracts were being traded between 29.26 and 29.29. And this is the reason that I have the 1000 tick chart. And for the 1000 tick chart, I'm gonna have the setting on the deviation points set to three here. What I'm looking at here is I'm looking at all this volume that was accumulated here on the open and then all this volume traded down here. These, the shorts that are down here, as we come back to where we had our exhaustion trade here, all of these short trades here are basically underwater and it's their last best chance to get out of this. As you can see, I have the delta strength on this chart and we can see that we had a lot of heavy buying going on here at the lows where we didn't see that back here when we were under an accumulation when we were seeing the, those high ratio numbers back here but we could see that the buyers stepped in right here and that gives you a lot of support when you go to make this exhaustion trade there we then traded up here into a strong trend and again we had a strong trend followed by an accumulation so we would be looking to take that we would not be looking to take the exhaustion short trade on the close because of the strong kp3 numbers so to go back and review the day you would have likely have gotten into a total of nine successful trades the only trade that you would have had to manage would have been trade number seven with the trend short trade trading into the exhaustion pattern. The purpose of the classification system, of course, is not to take every trade, but it's only to take the best trades. The best trades are defined as when we have a price pattern coupled with a order flow pattern coupled with a cumulative delta value, which is in agreement with the trade that we're gonna take. If you disregarded the classification system, however, the only trade that would have been a loser would have been this strong trend trade right here. And that illustrates the point of why we have the classification system, is we only want to be involved in the best of the best trades and in this case we were involved in a total of nine trades eight of which worked out so i hope you've enjoyed this trade review and classification video there is also an update to the bloodhound order flow software so if you are a bloodhound customer please contact me on skype and i will get you the new file what is new about the file is this. I've now created a special variable to be picked up by Bloodhound that differentiates between a stopping ratio and a continuation ratio. A stopping ratio is when we have a decimal point such as down here and a continuation ratio is when we have a whole number such as we see up here and up here. What we can now do is we can now test for just the stopping ratio by itself. There's absolutely no difference in the ratio signal here. It is just enabled. The only differences occur in the Bloodhound template. So besides uploading the new Bloodhound order flow file, you will also need to update the database file. Because the variable has changed, if you don't have the current variable, the whole thing's not going to work. So be sure to update both and get both from the uh, website. Thanks for watching. Have a good day.